You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, you weirdos. Jim here, and it's been a couple weeks. I have not been doing the most anticipated comic book show for a couple of these weeks in a row. It's not that I wasn't anticipating books. It's that life got in the way, all that nonsense. Ah, but here I am. And I ended up doing the best of the week show with Gray. So I figured we have to get things back on the rails, not off the rails, on the rails. So we're going to be doing this week's most anticipated comic show here. It's a preview show, and it is for the books that will mostly come out on June 12th, the DC stuff, and a couple other things kind of meander their way out on Tuesday the 11th. But you know what this is. It's all for this week. And I always say that we put away last week's books to look forward to all of the great things coming our way. And there are a bunch of good books coming out from every direction. The big two, indie, all that sort of jazz. So we're going to start. And before I do get into this, I do want to remind everybody to let me know what you're anticipating. Just because I'm anticipating a couple things doesn't mean that we shouldn't all anticipate everything. And what I always say is that if you end up saying, oh, well, I'm looking forward to this book or that book, sometimes I just miss things. I'm a dummy. So I do miss things a lot. And so if you end up, Saying that, I might actually check it out of other people as well. Some people may not be aware of a book, may not be aware that it comes out this week. So that is a pretty cool thing. And if you're playing at home, this is how we do this. I tell you the company, then we go through the books that I'm anticipating from that. And while I'll give you the title, the creative team, and we'll read the solicit, and then we'll mix in a little fun commentary along the way, hopefully. Hopefully it's fun commentary. I don't know. But we're going to start with DC Comics. I have two books from DC Comics. I think that one of them most people will guess. It's kind of a neat, cool thing coming out. It's Batman Gotham by Guess, like the Crimtodian Age number one. These are books that we usually don't feature on our podcast because it's Elseworld stuff. It's not in the regular continuity. But DC isn't putting out a lot of books. And they're not putting out a lot of great books either. So we are kind of scratching and a scritching to get anything. And my man Eric on our DC Comics podcast actually asked me if we could do this. And I was actually planning on doing it anyway. So it was pretty cool. But it's written by Andy Diggle, art by Leandro Fernandez. It is $4.99. Here's the solicit. The new era of Elseworlds kicks off with the return of its crown jewel. The mysterious and gothic world originated by Brian Augustine and Mike Mignola. When a mysterious meteor falls on the wide open plains of the Midwest, it will unleash a chain of events that find Gotham's bizarre Batman contending with not just the twin threats of the Catwoman and a mysterious international assassin, but also the emergence of superhuman beyond beings beyond all comprehension. The sequel series expands the 19th century DC universe beyond the confines of Gotham City, showcasing bold new visions of once familiar heroes. Do not miss it, it says. I don't trust it. I don't trust when a solicit says that because it's not going to say skip it or anything, right? It's not ever going to say that. But I am looking forward to see how they play that out, how Andy Diggle and Leandro Fernandez, you know, kind of deal with this whole Gotham by Gaslight, uh, including maybe the Smallville by Gaslight. We'll have to see. But the other book that I'm looking forward to or anticipating from DC is Green Lantern. Number 12, I'm a big Jeremy Adams fan, so that's not a big, you know, crazy mystery there. But it's written by Jeremy Adams. See, no mystery. Art by Zermonico and Kevin McGuire. Kevin McGuire doing the backup that is the Guy Gardner, or if you were in French Canada land, Montreal, Guy Gardner. That's what I like to say. Four ninety nine for that as well because of the backup. House of Brainiac tie Having uncovered the truth behind the United Planets, how... It, Hal's actually going to believe it now? I mean, the idea that Hal pretty much walked into a trap because he just could not, just couldn't get the idea of the United Planets might be slightly bad. They were more than bad. And spoiler alert, if you haven't read the last issue, now this is a month old, so I don't think it should be considered so much of a spoiler. They Durlins, they are. They were tricking everybody. Hal and the rest of the 2814 Lanterns desperately try to escape the hands of the United Planets Lanterns Ring Hunters 
and the terrifying unseen. Not unclean. That's me. I ended up having to clean my basement out today. The plumber is coming tomorrow, and we had a big kind of, I, I would like to call it what a quote unquote sewage leak. We had a couple of weeks ago. I had to clean that up because the plumbers are coming tomorrow to fix things up, and I was using a shovel. It was not great. It was not a pretty sight. Only a former ally gives Hal a chance of survival. I believe that might be one Carol Ferris. But will they be too late to save him from certain doom? Plus, Guy Gardner, or as I like to say, Guy Gardner, bogus Lobo adventure gets somehow even crazier. Don't ask us how. We just work here. See the solicits talking back again, but I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to both the front up and the back up. I want to see what Carol Ferris is going to be doing there as a star sapphire, as well as the idea of Guy Gardner, and he's trapped in the Zarnian city, so he has become front and center part of the House of Brainiac as well. So we'll see how that is, but those are the two books that I'm looking forward to or anticipating from DC. Let me know if there are more that you are looking forward to or anticipating in the comments below, but we'll move to Marvel. I almost said Marvel. Right, that Marvel actually awful, awful series back in the day. But I'm gonna put here the Blood Hunt number three, only because it is the event. I haven't been hating it. But I haven't been loving it either. It's kind of just a eh. I, I just shrugged my shoulders. If you could see that, uh, I don't think you could, but I did eh. And I think that's what a lot of people are just like eh. You know, it's okay. I don't see that many people like really front and center yelling oh my god this blood hunt is the greatest thing ever i can't most people i talk about are like hey they'll uh i'll check out the main book and here it is blood hunt number three written by jeb mckay art by pepe Flores, 4.99 night has fallen will the sun rise again i don't know not with those dark cold deals putting a you know whole pretty much cloud around the earth Again, as the heroes rally at the Sanctum Sanctorum, they must first deal with a threat close to their hearts. And while they raise the torch of defiance, the new Lord of the Vampires enacts his dreaded scheme. That seems to be Blade. Way, way back, I'm telling you, like five years ago, my man Brandon, he used to do the Marvel podcast with me. And at that point, he said, I think they're going to make, <laughs> he actually did say, I think they're going to make Blade the Lord of the Vampires. He was finally right. He just had to wait it out a bit, but he ended up being right right on the money that guy was. The next book and the second of two. I have two books at Marvel. This is a controversial pick. I, every time I talk about it, I get yelled at uh, by everybody, even my kids, my wife. They don't even know what the hell the book is, and they still yell at me about it. But everybody else, I'm anticipating it only because I hope that the pacing picks up once now that we have the Ultimates book out, I'm not sure, but we were told, and this is Ultimate X-Men, by the way, I shouldn't bury the lead like that, but Peach Momoko had even come out and said that the series is going to start kicking at issue four. I like the series, but the last issue, I didn't like as much. The pacing is glacial. It needs to start picking up a little. I mean, it really a lot. And I want to see some more things going on. So even though I have been arguing with people about this book and arguing on the side of I like it, I had to admit to a lot of people that last issue, yeah, it's starting to need uh, a big push. And hopefully it's here. But Ultimate X-Men number four is written by Peach Momoko, art by Peach Momoko. It's four ninety nine. It says New Mutants. I also said on our podcast, our Marvel podcast this past time, we talked about the Ultimate X-Men that I do think that it should have been Ultimate Runaways. I think that would have fit the whole play of what's going on, but that probably wouldn't sell. Or people, you end up Ultimate Runaways as one of the three first books. People are then going to say, well, why wasn't there an X Men book? So they kind of threw it out there. I admit it's not quite an X Men book, but I'm still enjoying it. Haseko and May's classmate, Nico Minora, well, has figured out that these two girls possess unusual abilities. He actually used the term mutants, the last issue. When when that's the thing, too, by the end of the issue, where Nico actually says the word mutants and everybody's excited, you realize not much is going on in a book. But they're not the only ones. Haseko's world gets a whole lot bigger in Ultimate X-Men number four. That's what was promised. We'll see. 
I think that a lot of people were, I mean, a ton of people, I think, just never even got into the book because it's not a classic X-Men book. A lot of people throw shit at Peach Momoko's art, but a lot of people who are reading it seem to be teetering on that fence. And hopefully this keeps them on, and mainly because I like to have people reading and enjoying books so that I can read, review, and enjoy the books with them. That's it. I'm selfish, but that's how I roll. That's how we roll here at the Weird Science Studios. Uh, we're going to move on now to indie books. This is a quick pace show here, and I know there are a ton of indie books. There always are. There are a bunch that I saw that I'm I'm pretty sure people are going to wonder why I didn't include them or put them themselves, hopefully. Because, again, put your books that you're anticipating in the comments below. Uh, but I'm keeping this pretty tight. But the first one I'm going to mention is something that I didn't even know was coming out, and I'm actually looking forward to a lot. And it is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Yusagi Yojimbo, Saturday Morning Adventures, number one. That just seems pretty cool. And the TMNT... Saturday morning event. It's a really good book. I've really been enjoying it. So I want to see what they end up doing with Usagi Yojimbo in that as well, which I do like. But it's written by Eric Burnham, art by Jack Lawrence, not Joey Lawrence. I, you didn't hear me go, whoa. That's what I would have done. Cover price five ninety nine. I don't even know if anybody get that anymore. Usagi Yojimbo, honorable samurai and rabbit out of time, has been stuck in New York City ever since one of Donatello's experience with a trans-dimensional portal went awry. Yusagi has grown to appreciate the city, his friends, and the turtles, and most of all, pizza. Who doesn't like, you know, who doesn't like pizza? I love pizza. And really, New York pizza. Chicago, you could stuff it. The idea that they're in New York, that's why. If he would have ended up somehow in Chicago, he probably would have just jumped right back in that portal and left. So this deep dish pizza, what is this, a pie? Not a pizza pie, a pie. Thing's a mess. But we he still wants to return to his own dimension more than anything. Did I tell you I hate Chicago-style pizza, deep dish pizza? I almost got one the other day. It's so funny that I say it because I'm kind of joking. I do like it, but it's a mess. See, I like pizza that you can eat like when you're doing laundry or when you're driving a cab. You can't do that. You cannot drive a cab and eat a deep dish chicago style pizza also there are some places i actually was with one place ever in my life but most places you can't just go and say hey give me a slice of that deep dish pizza you ain't gonna do that it's expensive i'm cheap i want to go in there i'm like hey give me three slices and a coke and i'm good now nowadays that's still like 30 bucks but still it's not 50 when donatello finally finds a way for yasagi to do just that you know what we're talking about pizza the rabbit warrior invites the turtles to visit his home, where they find a dangerous new enemy. It's, a, it's probably from Chicago. It's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and Yusagi Ojimbo together again in a whole new dimension. I am looking forward to that. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And if you haven't checked out any of the quote-unquote Saturday Morning Adventures books, I suggest you do. They're really, really fun and really do get the flavor and the feel of the Saturday Morning cartoons. Like, you could sit there and read them and eat cereal. Like, that'd be awesome. You, did, you spill it on there. I read digitally, so then I just wipe it off. It's happened, though. I, I, I have problems. One of the things I will suggest, especially, actually, it doesn't even matter. If you're reading regular comic, print comics, or digital, don't eat wings while you're doing that. It's not great. It doesn't work out. One time I ended up, like, I had to read a bunch of things for, to review them on our podcast. So I'm sitting there, but I was also hungry, and we had wings, so I'm eating wings. Try to do this. It didn't work out. Was a disaster, just like Chicago deep dish pizza. Next one is a book that the first issue I didn't love. I, I a lot of people loved it. I didn't love it. I saw the potential for it, and I'm excited about it. And by the end, the cliffhanger is really, really cool. So that's why I'm anticipating Ain't No Grave number two. I thought at first it should be called Ain't No Thang, but that would have made sense to the book. But it would have made me giggle, and maybe like. Think of it as I say that as salt and pepper saying that. Ain't no thing. Ain't no grave number two is written by Scotty Young, art by Jorge Corona, three ninety nine. It is worth it. Just the art and the first issue is worth it. I just thought it had a, a kind of weird, slower start. But then when you get to the very end, last two or three pages of last issue were banger. So I am looking forward to this. Writer seeks out death in the city of Cyprus, but quickly realizes that death is on the hunt for her as well. Isn't it always? That's that's the worst thing about death. 
always creeping, creeping and a creeping. She's a one-it woman, and I ended up where I should have ended up like throwing a TLC deal there. She's a one-it woman, and every bullet in this dark place is looking to put her in a grave. But lucky for her, there ain't no grave. That's how it should have ended. That would have been pretty funny, but it did not. But I'm looking forward to it. I think that that's going to pick up for me. Other people are already enthralled by it, so they do not need any extra picking up. But speaking of picking up, and I'm only saying that because that's a segue, doesn't really make much sense. Geiger, number three. I'm picking up some radioactive waves is what I should have said. Geiger, number three, written by Jeff Johns, art by Gary Frank, 399. Of course, it's the Ghost Machine imprint being distributed by Image. And I didn't say, but Image is also doing the Ain't No Grave. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Yosagi, Yojimbo, Saturday Morning Adventures is IDW. So just to let everybody know. But Geiger, it, it's funny. I've said this a bunch of times. Every time I review a Ghost Machine book so far, and this is a great thing to have happened. Every time I review a book, that particular book then becomes my favorite in the Ghost Machine imprint deal. So I read Geiger. I'm like, oh, my God. Like The first issue of Geiger, it was a lot of catch up, whatever. But the second. Starts kicking in. I'm like, I think Geiger's my favorite book. Okay. Then the next week you get Red Coat. I'm like, I think Red Coat's my favorite book. And then Brook Exodus comes. And I really do think right now, Brook Exodus is number one for me. Red Coat's really put, I really like the last issue of Red Coat, but I really like the last issue of Geiger. But boy, that last issue of Brook Exodus was so good. So I love them all, but I'm looking forward to Geiger. Here is the solicit. Tariq Geiger surrounds himself with some dangerous friends. His two-headed wolf Barney bears the trauma of the fateful night that Geiger found him, and he and Geiger's surprising new companion try to atone for a life of unfettered violence and brutality. But even between the three of them, they are no match for the many threats in pursuit. Plus, and this is a huge plus for people, especially me or including me. I don't know why especially me, but I think this will get people coming. And it's the return of Junkyard Joe, it says. So that is awesome. I love Junkyard Joe as well. So I am looking forward to that. Now, in the meantime, I have the review. This is just me bragging right now. I have the review copy for Geiger. I'm going to read that right when we get done here. But I also have a advanced, advanced, advanced copy of Red Coat. And I might end up reading that, maybe doing, you know, along the next week or so. Maybe a, a spoiler-free reaction type deal. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I say a lot of things I don't really mean. Uh, just ask my wife. She'll tell you that. But she says some things that she doesn't mean, like, I love you, I care for you, and, you know, stuff like that. It never works out. But that is it. Those are the books that I'm anticipating. So please let me know what books you are anticipating as well, even if they're the same ones that I am. Just, you know, let me know why you're anticipating them. Don't give me too much crap about that Ultimate X-Men. I'm telling you, if you have been hanging out on the channel and things like that and checking out stuff, and you're like, boy, Jim kind of you know loosened up this past couple of weeks. He hasn't done a lot of videos. It, it was partly because I was getting yelled at. I got all depressed about it. Not depressed, but kind of like, just kind of like, yeah, well, why do I bother? But I'm bothering you, Jim. I'm going to bother everyone, especially people who like the Chicago deep dish pizza. I don't like it, though. I will tell you, I do like Detroit-style pizza. I don't mind that. Uh, not that deep dish. You can't drive a cab. I never drove a cab in my life, but I'm I'm thinking that as, when I finally get that cabby job I've been waiting for, that's when somebody's somehow going to deliver a deep dish pizza to me. I'm going to lose my job. The cab's going to be a mess, be a wreck. Can't eat that. It's like it's like eating like Taco Bell half the time. You, you're there eating, you're trying to grab it. It's all over the place. I shouldn't eat in the car as much as I do. I'm not even in the car that much. But that is that. So thanks everybody. Thanks for listening. Please again, let me know you know what you're looking forward to, and if you're still hanging around uh, as I yibber and yabber, uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And like the video, all that stuff that people say at the end that I always forget about. And if you do like the stylings that you got here, you can maybe check out our Patreon account. It is patreon.com slash weird science, where you can get a ton of shows, including a weekly DC comic spotlight show for me and my man, Eric, to review two books that are picked by the badasses of the Get Fresh crew, or earn two books on a poll. 
that they end up picking in the Patreon. And then we do those. This past week was Batman and Neil before Zod. So if you want to see those reviews, again, go over to patreon.com slash weird science. You can get a free trial, free week's trial. Check it all out. But thanks a lot. And I will talk to you all later. You are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution.